to Radio 54. Wow, how the world has changed. In the span of one week since we last met, the world has changed so much. Simple things like shaking hands, hugging, kissing. And well, let's be honest with you, if you are about to close the deal with an attractive member of the opposite sex... It's my duty to please that booty. Well, then that's also on hold. Unless, of course, you're a fool like this bunch of idiots from Spain. Spain is one of the worst hit countries when it comes to coronavirus. After Italy, Spain is next in terms of cases and death rate. More than 4,000 people have died so far in Spain from coronavirus, the highest death toll of any country in the world except Italy. The beauty here, though, is the fact that the Spanish still want to get it on. Because when they were told there's a curfew, they were like, F you. And not only did this uh, group continue having sex in Barcelona, but they did well, what any God-fearing, virus-fearing, massively hit population would do. They went ahead and had an orgy. Undercover cops in Barcelona raided the raunchy revelers as they prepared to indulge in a group sex session at a holiday apartment during the country's strict COVID-19 curfew. In the Barcelona orgy raid, uh, drugs including cocaine and liquid ecstasy were also seized from the apartment, which had been rented for a week by one of the partygoers. Local reports said another 20 people were expected at the sex bash. Organized as a website launched before police intervened, there are two ways to look at the situation. One, it could be deemed irresponsible, right? Or two, like if I'm changing my life and if this is in fact the end of days, like many have predicted, well, at least they get to go out with a smile on their faces, right? Let's talk about the end of days, shall we? There have been many conspiracy theories about this being the end of days. Many people predicting that the world is going to come to a halt, that Mother Nature's had enough, and that the wrath of a power greater than ourselves has cursed us for our lives of greed, gluttony, hate, and disregard for anything or anyone. Now, as we touched on last week, the most scientific minds are actually speaking of religion, and the most religious minds are talking about science. With that in mind, I hand it over to Justine, who's on the ground for more. Thank you, Farid. Is your local place of worship putting your life in danger? Are they asking you to leave your house to go congregate in crowds? Have they hiked offering prices? Are they telling you that coronavirus is a hoax? Well, stop stressing. If you're experiencing any of this, just text NOT TODAY all to your local WhatsApp place of worship group. I'll repeat, text NOT TODAY all to your local WhatsApp place of worship group. Trust me, heaven understands. I think if Jesus was here, he would practice social distancing by only hanging out with two disciples at a time, each at six feet. It would have taken the entire book of Matthew for him to feed those 5,000 people because that was the responsible thing to do. He would, have, he would probably turn water into sanitizer because that's the alcohol we need. Remember, if you have to pray, your house is a great place too. It's just you, the amazing acoustics, and your Lord. The coronavirus is real, people. So stay safe, stay apart, stay at home, and stay alive. All right, thank you very much, Justine, for that insightful conversation about religion and COVID-19. It appears to be in all the Bible verses and scriptures. In fact, religions have concluded that all holy books and teachings have led up to this moment in human history. Let's pause for a minute and really take this in, because I have a theory, and that theory is that this mother decided to take a bite out of a bat, and now we're all well, maybe not but entirely touched up in a way that we're not comfortable with. Quiet, quiet, quiet. Let's continue. It appears that the world has been flipped on its head. Things have gone completely backwards. The action is now being presented with an opposite and equal reaction. Like this shit, the Trump administration is appealing to countries around the world to give or sell them basic items, such as sanitizer and as complex as respirators to combat the surging coronavirus epidemic. In a list obtained by CNN, the State Department lays out 25 items telling diplomats to ask their host countries for these supplies with a clear priority on items available today and a secondary focus on equipment and items available in the weeks ahead. Trump has basically quoted the Defense Production Act to produce and funnel crucial supplies to uh, struggling states and hospitals. It's not clear how many countries the U.S. has appealed to, but the list spans the gamut of equipment that overburdened American hospitals are seeking. The simpler items include biohazard bags, N95 masks, gloves, gowns, surgical caps, shoe covers, sharps, containers, protective eyewear, hand sanitizer, and other protective gear. And now here's the real kick in the crotch. Mexico are now like, F it, we need a f***ing wall because America has the China virus and in a bad way. And we don't want that fill from across the border. Yes, that's right. Leave us with our underage prostitution, child trafficking and drug related beheadings. We're cool keeping that here behind a wall that we want to build to protect us from America. Mexico has now actually put in a crackdown of Americans crossing the border into their country. The world has indeed been flipped 
on its head. The world's most abundant economy, the bastion of democracy, and the epitome of the free world is quite literally f***ed. And we're sitting here wondering how. Now the question has to be asked, WWBD, that's right, what would Barack do? I, Obama, care about you more than you even know. Let me reiterate one more time that this f virus does not discriminate. A little photo montage for you of the famous people, celebs, and world leaders that have gotten bent over and f by COVID-19. Time now for the Radio 54 Top Hit List. Now we know you're f***ing bored, working from home, and doing sweet f*** all. If you're like me, it's very hard to organize myself in a scheduled format while I'm working from home. I can't do it. So today, I give you the Radio 54 Hit List of things to do when your office tells you not to come to work until further notice. At number 10, go on a citywide toilet paper hunt. At number nine, make cardboard costumes and reenact the way Game of Thrones should have ended. At number eight, color code your anti-anxiety pills. At number seven, watch Half of the Irishman. It's a long ass movie. At number six, role play that you're an emergency room doctor, putting on a hefty bag and wearing a bandana over your mouth. Number five, teach your dog cool tricks like sit, shake, and make hand sanitizer. Number four, take some time to really get to know your kids' names. And number three, gather together in the living room so you can stare at your phones as a family. Number two, wash and sanitize your sex doll. And the number one thing you can do while you're at home, bored as fuck, can we get a drum roll, please? Yes, you can exercise your right to daydream. Let's bring it close to home now. Now, either this motherfucker is doing such a good job at running one of Africa's poorest, most shit countries, or there's a load of information being withheld. Because let's be honest, nothing, and I mean no information, leaves Burundi without the okay of their president, Pierre Nkurunziza. Why am I telling you this shit? Well, so far, one of the only countries in the world without a single case of coronavirus is Burundi. Do you believe that shit? About as much as I believe that eating a bat is a good idea. As of March 26, Burundi had not reported a single case of COVID-19. In a nationally broadcast address, Burundi's government spokesperson warned media houses against spreading false information on the pandemic. False information or the fucking truth. Now, I've been there a couple of times for work and never for pleasure. And let me tell you one thing. It ain't a sanitary, clean and hygienic country. I'm just saying, I, if Burundi, if you get the coronavirus, you may as well keep your mouth shut because you'd rather die of COVID-19 than just disappear in a country where that's pretty much the norm. But it's not all doom and gloom. Say what you want about Rwanda and this man, loved and feared in equal measure. The country is clean, shit works, and he's the darling of the West. Now he's taken his darling stature to a brand new level as a deadly coronavirus pandemic is rearing its ugly head the world over. Many countries have been compelled to enforce drastic measures. Rwanda was one of the first countries in sub-Saharan Africa to impose a total lockdown. But in imposing these measures, the country has not forgotten about its vulnerable members of the population. The country's president, Paul Kagame, ordered free door-to-door -door food distribution for the most vulnerable since the country is in the middle of a lockdown. He's also planning to provide essential services such as the supply of water and electricity, and electricity rather, for free, so that people do not face challenges in acquiring these services. He made the food distribution announcement in a television address. We may not be getting door-to-door -door distribution, no free electricity here, let's be honest, KPLC. There's no doubt that this man, Mutai Kagwe, is doing a bang-up job, but let's keep our perspective on this. Because as of Monday, March 30th, we only had 42 cases of the coronavirus. This basically means that right now, we are not in the red at the moment. But if this changes, and this disease exponentially does, then we'll have a major problem on our hands. And this cool, calm and collected man, who again has done a stellar job so far, may start to sweat. We'll only see. You see, Kenya only has 518 critical care beds to cater for patients. A frightening prospect when you think of how stretched Italy with thousands of beds and Spain with thousands of beds. Perhaps this is why the government took such a hard line last week when it came to social distancing and curfews. I work in town doing my radio show from the 19th floor of Londro House each and every morning. And I gotta be honest, while town is eerily quiet, the few people left are all up in each other's business, including in my building. This is frightening. So here's my question to you. Is a lockdown inevitable? And if so, and seeing how bored you are right now, is this the only way we as Kenyans will stop basically touching one another? The lesson, one more time, is 
Between people who are in close contact with one another, within six feet, stay that far apart. And of course, the respiratory droplets reduced when an infected person coughs, these droplets can land in your mouths or noses of people who are nearby, or possibly be inhaled into the lungs. And then you're f***ed. For those who are at home, bored, isolating, and self-quarantining, there's always porn. In fact, Pornhub is making its premium service free to everyone until April 23rd. Great news for, well, f***ing everyone. But bad news is it could cause an even bigger shortage of hand sanitizing products. Well, there you have it. Pornography on the rise uh, in uh, these times of isolation and quarantine. My cousin was actually under a 14-day quarantine the other day. I asked him how he's doing, and he said he's reached the last page of Pornhub. I did not think that was possible, <laughs> but if there's anything we've learned the last few months, is that anything is possible, Absolutely. literally. Yeah. And, and, and of course, what, what else is possible is the fact that cops don't seem to realize that everyone has a camera phone. I, I got so mad. Let me tell you, the last three days have just been me fuming mad. Just be, every time I remember what's been happening in what happened in Likoni, what happened like all across the country because of cops. And I don't understand why after so many years, like we've been talking about police brutality since I don't know, I was born and nothing ever changes. It never ever changes. Yeah. And okay. that's my first story today on a more serious note. I know most of us are staying at home and trying to flatten the curve, but some people are outside and are social distancing from reason. If you don't know any group of people operating like this, allow me to introduce you to our police force. You may know some of their smash hits, pun intended, like tear gassing peaceful protesters, alleged witness disappearances, the very famous 50 Bob handoff, and their new release currently topping the charts, brutalizing innocent Kenyans trying to get home an hour before curfew. In case you missed it, Kenyan police, just like many Pornhub premium users, took matters into their own hands Hands and went off at ferry commuters in Likoni on day one of the countrywide 7 p.m. to 5 a.m. curfew, beating travelers, then tear gassing them, even though it was 6 p.m., a full hour before curfew began. Here's a list of 10 things you can actually do in an hour. Count to 3600, wait to get served at any restaurant at the coast, listen to two Lingala songs, do your hair in case you're read. listen to your African mom pray over dinner. Kisha ukauba bigu nainchi. Watch an episode of 60 Minutes. Wait to see a doctor in a public hospital. Run half a marathon, if you're Kenyan. Write an entire episode of Radio 54. Welcome to a brand new season of Radio 54. It's not all gone to sh Started getting f <laughs> And make $1.38 million if you are Bill Gates. And most importantly, you can get home. Their genius method to handle people defying the curfew restrictions was to expose hundreds of people to tear gas, which led to coughs and tears, predictably, then bundling them up like veggies at Marie Kitty. Which, stay with me, kids, if you've been listening to literally any healthcare professional, is the second most efficient way of spreading the virus, right after injecting a needle full of Boris Johnson's blood straight into people's lungs. So this week's Cove Idiot Award goes to the National Police Service for not just being their usual ill-spirited, spiteful, violent selves, but for also potentially exposing hundreds of Kenyans to a deadly virus and endangering their health. I assure you, none of those travelers were coming from a beach day on Diani's White Sands. They were ordinary Kenyans trying to fend for themselves and their families in even harder times than usual. There's many questions that can be raised from this incident. Why were the police enforcing a curfew even before its time? Why not use reason instead of force? Why deploy tear gas, which by the way was banned for use in warfare, but is still used by police forces around the world, on unarmed and non-criminal, non-violent civilians? But the answers to these questions would require one engages logic, which seems to go straight out the window whenever police meet one anchi. If you've been watching the show for a while, you know a negative rant like this is out of character for me, but the events at Likoni left an incredibly bad taste in my mouth, and some things just need to be said. Luckily, even in a pack of wolves, you'll always find a nurturer. Several police officers stepped up to the plate and showed compassion and reason while enforcing the, cu the curfew. Just have a look. A bachilla was filmed assembling those who were caught past curfew, and instead of beating them up, he decided to sen sensitize them about the killer virus before sanitizing their hands and allowing them to go home. Another police officer, a lady, was also showered with praise after she helped a mother and her child get home to safety. All right, we are back with our ground correspondent, George. What do you have for us today? Uh, thank you, Mariam. So we've all been dealing with and adjusting to the dust to don't curfew, right? Yes. Uh, it has hit some harder than others. 
I'm talking about street food vendors. So let me ask you, Mariam, what's your favorite street food? Shawarma. I live for shawarma. I, I could eat my own body weight in shawarma. Nice. For me there, I thought you were going to say something fancy like breakfast burritos or oh, something. It's, breakfast. it's not street food by now. What's, what's your favorite? Okay, my favorite is, and thank you for asking, but they did not plan this beforehand. So <laughs> my, my favorite street food is actually mutura. They call it African sausage. And um, these guys have been hit harder than I think everyone else because yeah. there's a recent study that was done and showed that the best time to consume mutura is actually at 8.30 p.m. Is this a scientific study? Yeah, that I, that I paid for it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but really, think about it, man. If he opened at 7 p.m., yes. by the time it's 8 that he's experimented with the coal, the grill, the kachumbari is exceptional. I mean, it's perfect. But like now, the balance is just there. Exactly. It's been marinated, it's been soaking in the dust, or everything. It's perfect, right? Yes. They actually say that utamu wa mutura ni kukulia gizani. It's true. Utamu ni giza. The worst thing you want to do is take a bite of mutura at 6.30. PM. You might as well just take a bite into the cow, right? Wow, okay. Not just Mutura guys have been affected by the dusk to don't curfew. you. I feel bad for pickpockets and muggers who rely on darkness to put wallets on the table. I don't want to be mugged at 6 p.m. when I can clearly make out my assailant's face. Dude, you've mugged me three times this week. Take a tip from Corona and spread out. In other depressing news, couples are having to spend more time with their wives and girlfriends, or even worse, their kids. How long will we live like this? We took to the streets to see how people are dealing with the COVID-19 curfew. Tumewatembelea hii mtaa ya Kibra na sasa hii kunaonekana ni kama kumenyamaza. Normally kuna kuanga hivi. Normally ya kuanga hivi. Hata ukiangalia watu na kuanga wamecha but juu ya curfew watu wamejifungia kwa manyumba. Like this side almost to something. Kumenyamaza hivi juu stima ilikatwa. Hiyo kafi umekuwa affecta jewe mwenyewe? Mavichano wengi waki, waki lose kitu ya kudu, wanaingia wananza kuwa waizi na vitu zingine. But that's why tunawamba pia hii story ishe, ndiyo kafi at least iliftie. Kusanitize inaona hata wameshugulika na hazato kiangalea utona mavibu zina uzo hizi za, ku, za kusanitize. Social distancing hapa kibira ndo challenge. Kuna mali nyumba ziko crowded, so always ka expect mtu wa keep space yake. Umeongelea kuhusu kusanitize, lakini tunona hapa ni ka hotel uneza ingia na ukule. Na vibanda ziko hapa kando ya barabara kama motura, watu wa samosa, unaona kama watu na sanitize ukweli kila time. Ukiangalea street toka ile saidi ya huko mbaka huko, tapata multiple nini hizi mm, vitu za dispenser za maji na sabuni for free na najua watu wanapenda ku make fun ya watu wa kibrati wanacheza cheza na polisi hiyo ni kama ni kama practice sasa tunajaribu kusema kuandamana bila tia kasi maandamano mpaka wa ruse ndio tutatoka at first ma police ndio walijaribu kukimbizana na watu lakini ilikuwa ni vijana wadogo na walikatazwa wasionekana kwa barabara pa 7 unajua pia oni ni watu kaa sisi na wako na familia huku nje lakini venye tunao wakigonga watu Unezambia tu karao nini kama kuna karao wanasikiza? Wasi rushe rungu sana. At least wako na ile ero ya utu. Ya kuweza kulizo natoka hapi na unenda hapi. Si kwanza tu kukupiga bila kujua malume toka. Naitwa Judy nafanya biashara ya fish. Watu wanakula na ugali niko na hoteli ndogo hapa. Kuna wenye wanakuja wanachukua wakipeleka kwa manyumba. Wa Kenya sasa wana deal laki kitu inaitwa curfew. Nieleze wewe kifi yako venye unaelewa hii curfew na maana yake ni nini? Curfew imekuja juu ya corona. Tumepewa curfew kutoka 7 in the evening PM mpaka 5 in the morning. Unaweza fanya biashara yako in between 5 na 7. Aya na wewe ukiangalia venye kuku hapa Kibra, unaona kama watu wana, wanazingatia hiyo curfew kabisa kabisa? Yeah, wanazingatia naona saa hizi ikifika 6:30 watu wakamwambia wanaingia kwa manyumba. Some few guys wenye watakuwa pengine wamechelewa mahali. Eh ama wenye wanataka kuona curfew ni nini pia wako hapo nje wanangojea. Peak hour ya biashara yako ni saa From 6 o'clock up to around 8. Because as zile watu wametoka kazini wanapitia wakichukua samaki wakiingia nayo kwa manyumba. Obviously biashara yako imeaffectiwa. Tuambie umeona imeaffectiwaje? Watu wanatoka kazini wanakimbizana na makafiu polisi time hata mtu apitie chukue chakula is already late sisi pia ma time zetu sasa lazima tufunge by 6 so that uh, tufike kwa manyumba at 7 kuna kitu naweza taka kuambia government venye hii curfew inaweza kwa vizuri ndio isi isinyanyase watu wa biashara kama za mutura kama wewe wa samaki watu wa biashara 
pengine eh, kama serikali wanaweza saidia watu some guys with food something like hard stuffs beans maunga maziwa hata wow. Rwanda ndio wanafanya wana distribute chakula kwa door to door yes i think that one can also help because sasa sales imeenda chini watu pia wana pesa people really complain makarao wakifanya hizo vituko zao huko likoni kiambu wanapiga watu Seven ikifika tuseme for whatever reasons uko umepatikana nje unaogopa kuwa nje ama unaogopa kuwa nje because uh, ukipatikana unajua unapigwa mtu ame surrender baada na chapo that is not fair thank you very much judy sitanifungia kama mbili hivi nikienda of course lazima tunapigana na hii coronavirus na juu umeisikia na government ime implement vitu kama curfew social distancing kunawa mkono na sabuni uh, wacha tuchukue moja kama hiyo ya ku social distance unaelewaje kuhusu hiyo tufai kukalibiana hapa kwa biashara yako ina, inafanyika eh customer akikuja kununua mboga tasimama huko mimi nikimkatia mboga ama akichukua kitu na nipea tu pesa wafanyi biashara wadogo kama wewe kuna watu wanauza mutura mahali kuna huyu wa samaki hapa nyuma biashara imeaffectiwaje watu wanaenda anga kazi kurudi jioni wanapata kama tumefunga hawanunui fitu sasa zinakaa hapo zinalipika kama hii ndizi ukiangalia hiyo ndizi ni ya jana si unaona hata imejenchi tumeongea na watu wengine wametuambia waliona makarao wakifukuzana wakipigana wewe uli experience hiyo ama ulikoshaenda kwa kwa nyumbani nilifunga 6 na mbona watu wengine wakiambiwa hivyo hawatai kusikia lazima watoke toke tunafaa kuti tusipoti unajua sisi ndio tutakuwa na shida tukiambiwa saa saa moja tupate kwa nyumba inafaa tupate kwa nyumba tusikuwe na kichwa nguvu Hata kabla nianze hii duka ni ya nani? Duka ni yangu mimi mwenye nimekaa hapa anaitwa Nyams. Nimeona ka sanitizer hapo, nimekuja nikawapata mkikaa mhamjakaribiana sana. Tunaelewa aje hiyo mambo ya ku social distance. Mambo ya social distance nao ni shida. Ah, mwafrika lazima achape story. Unajua hivi vitu tunaisikia kwa TV na radio, tukae mbali kama mara kuna ukonjo ya corona. Filamu tawi amesema on emphasizing high levels of hygiene and the maintaining of social distance. Tunajaribu tena tunasahau. Naona uko na marafiki wako, niambie jina yako na unajua nyamsaje. Naitwa Nyankabaria. Ni sister yangu. Naitwa Ana Mora. Mimi ni mtoto wa mwasista yangu. Kasi mimi nauza viatu huko Katwekera, lakini sasa shawai yaenda tu nimeogopa ile mbio. Kini Masai jafika saa hii. Unasaka kutoka saa hii mpaka saa 10 na mimi chao. Lakini saa moja saa mbili ndio naona wakitoka kasi wananunua nunua. Uko umefungua Friday? Eh Friday nilikuwa hapa mpaka saa moja, lakini ile mbio nilienda. Kumba askari wa Kenya hawana masoezi. Nikukura tu wanakula pale. Mbona tumewekewa hiyo kafiu na serikali? Sio mbaya, penyewe ni sawa. Lakini sasa pengine unajua mtu taisaenda mbali mcherewe. Kama juzi nilikuwa nyumba yangu karibu na barabara. Mzee mwingine alipiwa mpaka nikatoka nilikuwa naapika ugali. Haki nikatoka nje nikasema nyende nimsaidie nisema haki tafadhali msimuue. Lakini walimchapa mpaka nikamwambia wenzangu ati ai haki kwa nini wanapiga yule mzee hivi? Mama mwingine akaniambia hapana sio mzee yako alichelewa. Lakini nikamwambia hata si kama sio mzee yangu. Niliona ni kama ni vibaya sikusikia msuri. Tu binadamu ni binadamu. Hata pia vile wanataandika mtu hata wa keep distance. Labda niko na hiyo corona pia wao wananigonga na mimi na mgonga mkono. Hawana sana taisa. Si pia wamepata hiyo ugonjwa wangekuwa wanasimama distance ya wani mita wanaambia mtu mpaka kwa njia na msionekane wawili ndio wanaesaidia unaelewa nini about uh, social distance si ukae mbali ndio usiambukishe mwingine sasa watoto niko nao kwa nyuma ni saba social distance inaingiana acha pengine mseme mzaa rara chini ya kitanda mimi chuo ya kitanda chuo ndio kwa 1 tisa 0 chini ya pedi ndio tunayakanga vitu sasa zenye tu ya nini ti nyuma ni ndogo okay tukimalizia basi na juu umesema hauoni kifanya kazi unaweza ambia serikali nini ni waongeze masaa watu waweze kufanya biashara zao ama wakiongeza masaa kidogo kuna wale watakuja baadaye upate wa merara wengine waamuke ndio at least social distancing that one ikae vizuri kidogo watu fungie kwa nyumba hata kama ni one week lakini watupatie chakula tukae kwa nyumba tuone kama hiyo corona itaisha tujue wale wanatoka nje tujue hatutoki ndio wanaleta hiyo ugonjwa ndio tutaisaidika uko na watoto kwa nyumba sita 
Atunya nishifita corona na kuku, na, na ntaa sita toa. Corona inaona kama ni kama kaoma. Ukikula kama manchungwa hivi vizuri hivi unatembea immunity iko sawa. Kwa hiyo lakini sasa hii mambo ya anga ndio shida. Ya dunia imekuwa mbaya. All hope is not lost. Admits all the chaos. There's an organization bringing hope to the residents of Kibera. Shofko is your name. Nimeona hapa mko na maji ya kunawa na sabuni kila mtu anakaribishwa hapa unanawa. Tuambie tu kama Shofko mnakuja aje kusaidia Kibera in terms of ku, ku stop coronavirus. Sanitizer si watu hapa Kibera wa watu wanaweza afford sanitizer kutoka bendi kwa mkono. So to come the best thing ni kuna as regular as possible as many times as you can so show ko tukaona the best thing to eke maji at least mwenye napita apate kuna pia na sensitize wazoe kunawa venye umeangalia pa kibera unaona kama wanasisitiza wana wanafanya inavyofaa kuna mkono wananawa juma mboga saa hizi wako na points za maji unani unanawa mkono ndio una una nini unaingia hapo ni ngumu lakini wanajaribu na hiyo ya social distancing social distancing ni shida kidogo manake unafika hapo naambia msonge unao wengine naye sijui ni haraka wako nao na mtu anakuja anaweka mkono uh, tueleze unaelewa nini mambo ya hii kafio hii kafio ni kufunga yani kuingia kwa manyumba mapema ili to avoid unajua usiku sana sana uwezi jua ni nani ulikuwa karibu na nani ama kama we ni mtu wa bodaboda umebeba nani but kama ni mchana hivi utamuona utajua ni nani so ikifika seven, kila mtu akae kwa nyumba ndio in case of anything tunaweza what government wanaweza trace ili to save life of others we are humans ndio kunaweza patikana ka emergency utake kutoka after 7 pm lakini tumeona vitu ziliko zina happen those karao people they are also human beings kama wamenipata usiku inafaa wanisimamishe waniulize unaenda wapi na saini saa ngapi niwaeleze wakiona ni kitu reasonable waniache niende if possible wanaweza ni escort kwa hivyo hapo walikosea unaweza nini makarao wanaweza kwa kiwachi kama mtu ako na reason why ako nje please wa, wa reason aye lakini kama ni kichwa ngumu hiyo pia hatuwezi fanya nini hatuwezi warudie but kama ako na reason hao pia waangalie kama human being As we have seen from the people we've interviewed in Kibra, the new curfew is not without its challenges. But thanks to Kenyan's ingenuity, they are adhering to this new directive. Back to you in studio. On a much needed lighter note, we've talked about Russian President Vladimir Putin on this show a lot. And that's because he is the gift that keeps on giving. He's tough and scary, but in a cool way like Marlon Brando in The Godfather. We've known each other many years, but this is the first time he ever came council um, I can't remember the last time that he invited me to the house for a cup of coffee he does everything taking dips in ice cold water deciding US elections bare chested horse riding if you've never seen the cover of the mills and boons novels they look a lot like this and now he's attending meetings in full protective gear looking like an extra on the set of a movie about a weaponized virus that is wiping out the world wait is that not what we're currently living through Okay, I am kidding, but that was a fake news story. See how easily you believed it though. That's why you need to double, triple check everything that you see online and on your telly and even what I see. Now that your guard is slightly up, here's a few real stories that sound fake. In an unprecedented win for misogyny, Malaysia is only allowing the head of the households to leave the house. And that means that supermarket aisles are now filled with confused men holding small pieces of paper, bringing a whole new meaning to the term panic buying. To quote one man, I felt dizzy trying to work out which were the mustard greens, which was spinach, and which was pak choy. Then there was the many kinds of cabbage, cabbage, sorry, the long ones, the round ones, the short. Equally ridiculous, the president of Belarus, Alexander Lukashenko, refuses to cancel any mass gatherings in defiance of COVID fears and is leading by example. He was at an ice hockey game just this past weekend, but do not get me wrong, it's not that he is in denial about corona. He just thinks that drinking vodka and going to saunas are sufficient anti-corona measures. EP, aka enemy of progress. I would like to end on a positive and real note though, like I always do. If you have any ink, whether it's a semicolon or a full-on sleeve tattoo, you may have been misjudged or snubbed because of your tattoos. But I always maintain that some of the sweetest souls you'll ever come across are inked. 
Case in point, tattoo shops and parlors around the world are closed for obvious reasons. And in New York, tattooists, yes, that is a word, are donating their masks and gloves to healthcare professionals who are in dire need of them. If that does not put a smile on your face, then go get one tattooed on you Joker style because you are broken on the inside. Well, that's gonna wrap it up for us. Mariam, thank you so much uh, for your insight and bringing some seriousness to an otherwise very funny world. It's funny in like a sad way, but I'm always happy to do it. And of course, a big thanks to Justine and George for a great show. So I, I don't know, from us, it's just goodbye until next week. But remember, social distancing doesn't mean just hanging with friends. Ah, before we leave, I have one thing to do though. Yeah. Last week on the show, we were doing, so we want you, obviously, social distancing, isolation, quarantine, and stop touching your face. Last week on the show, uh, I think I was the biggest culprit, but you also did Me as well. Too, yeah. Here's some clips of, of us touching our faces throughout the last broadcast of Radio 54. We leave you with them and we'll see you next week. And really get an understanding of what So let me give you some tips and answer some And uh, recently you went out on the streets. I love the Italian people. I really do. And this is takeaway and a ra and a Sleep, sanitize my hands and keep There really isn't. Some people aren't taking it serious. Okay, a lot of us aren't taking it seriously. People are going on as if life is normal and I'm thinking like, what will make you click? What will finally make you click? Is it a death? Is it like a, a big number, like 10,000? <laughs>